Hoje vamos conversar com Mário Vanuc, professor catedrático estrangeiro em sabática na Universidade Aberta. Mário Vanuc é diretor do departamento na Universidade de Gante, na Bélgica. E leciona também numa universidade em Londres e também na China, num total de oito unidades curriculares por ano. A sua área de investigação é na gestão de projetos, risco, gestão e controle de projetos. É autor de mais de 60 artigos em diversas revistas internacionais, com mais de 10 citações, quatro livros editados pela editora Springer. É membro da empresa Operations Research Applications and Solutions, onde lançou uma ferramenta de gestão de projeto comercial, ProTrack, e uma ferramenta também para utilização académica, conhecida por P2 Engine. Uh, Professor Mario Vanuc, thank you for this conversation. In simple words, what are the main areas of your research? In words that we can understand, uh, please. In words that you can understand. Well, my main area is project management. Eh? And I focus on, on three important parts of project management. Uh, first, planning. If you build a house, you need a plan. So I focus on how to build such a plan. The second thing is risk. Risk means things go wrong. If you build your house, then certainly you have delays or you have more costs than expected. So how can you manage that risk? And then the last thing is control. If you build your house, you have to control. You have to look whether yeah, you don't spend too much. And the integration of plan, risk and control, that's my research topic in a nutshell. Can you please short us, uh, in uh, short words, um, uh, present us a paper um, to give some idea at people at home uh, what type of work a researcher as you do? Yeah, well, maybe an interesting one is, is uh, the paper on data. You know, we live in a world where big data is important. And we wrote a paper with, uh, with a colleague here from, uh, from Lisbon about data in our research. And there are two classes of data. There's a class... Uh, let's call it artificial data that we use in our research. So that's not real data, that's data that we create. Uh, and we create that for our own research. It has nothing, I mean, nothing to do with reality. But then there's a second class, which is real data, real projects. And of course, we also use that. And the, the link between real data and artificial data is one of our research topics. And we have written a paper about that in order to, to show it to researchers and professionals what they can do with, with that big data thing. I know you love Lisbon. You're here yes, to do. work. <laughs> yes? Yeah, yeah partly, yes. What are, you, what are you doing here in Lisbon and at Universidade Aberta? Well, uh, basically, I, I work together with one colleague of, of the university on our research right? because the biggest asset that I have here in Lisbon is time. Right? I don't have that in, in Belgium because I have students, I have teaching assignments, but here I have time, so we have our regular meetings. And our meetings basically is nothing more than discussions that we have. And we have all kinds of ideas. And some ideas yeah, become a paper and other ideas uh, are not so good. But we have time to discuss, to work together and to write papers. And that's why I'm here, uh, because I want to have time to work on my research. But you love Lisbon, is uh, correct? Of course I do. It. Uh, it's good weather, it's good food, nice people. Yeah, I love it. It was love on first sight. <laughs> have you stopped your work in Ghent? Uh, no, I didn't stop. Of course, it's a little bit calmer. You have a distance work? Yeah, so I have Skype. And I think that many people who still work with me in Belgium don't realize that I'm in Belgium, uh, that I'm in Lisbon, because, yeah, there is Skype, there are telephone calls. So I, I keep on doing my work in Belgium. But of course, I don't have many meetings, so I have more time in Belgium, but I don't stop my work there, no. But you have hard work. How is it possible to teach so many courses in different country, countries and uh, have, uh, you have a responsibility, a responsibility of a, a, a department, you are yes. head of department, and you have a, an intense research activity and your day has only 24 hours, correct? That's, uh, that's true, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Uh, how do I do that? Is that the question? Well, I think I do it like everybody else. I work hard. I love it. And the reason why I do it, maybe that's interesting. The reason why I teach is that's for me an outlet for my research. If you write a paper, then you write papers for academics. But if you teach, then you can translate your research to, yeah, to business people. Right? So that's the reason why I combine it with teaching. And the reason why I teach uh, in, in, in other countries is yeah, different cultures means different opinions. Basically, the, the people from other countries, they define my research. I mean, they sometimes ask me a question, 
that is so totally new for me that I that I see the, the, the relevance of that question and then we translate that into research. So yes, I work hard, but it's a, it's more a, a hobby or a passion than real hard work, so no problem. Is there an advice that you can uh, tell to people uh, that is listening to you uh, and want to work as a researcher? Uh, an advice, if you want to become a researcher, then my advice is just do it. I mean, you have to think it like this, eh? How many times in your life are you going to have the opportunity to do something that you really like? Because that's research. You, you focus on one little point, you work on it for four or five years, you try to discover a new thing, and at the end, you even get a PhD for it. It was, for me, the best time of my life. So I should do it if, if I were a young researcher. Mario Vanuk, thank you for this conversation. It's wonderful. Thank you thank very you. much for having me. Thanks.